Charlie, take two, A and B minor. I've always wanted to be a teacher. My earliest memories are that of playing school with my brother, who's four years younger than I am. So I loved books, and I loved sharing books with children. And I loved thinking about books with children and talking about books with children. So I became a teacher to make a difference. I started out as a high school English teacher in Buffalo, New York during the turbulent 60s and 70s. Life in those days seemed a little simpler. I wanted to become a teacher so I could make a difference and change the world. teacher back then was very different than it is today. You were put into a classroom. The students were grouped homogeneously. And they told you, go teach. In those days, it might have been sufficient to read a book. And we knew what books were good for children, and we even knew how they were reading. But we never really asked them to do some deep thinking about their reading. It was about getting a textbook and memorizing that book. If the students were unable to keep up with the curriculum, unfortunately, they were left behind. The class had to keep on moving. And then there was Thinking Maps. that students who speak another language need a watered-down curriculum or a simpler curriculum because they don't speak English. The largest group of English language learners are the Hispanic population. The research tells us that we are at risk that the majority of these children may either drop out, out of school or never finish college. That is a huge problem for this country. It behooves all of us in education to look at this population, the largest minority group of this nation, to make sure that they are great thinkers, major contributors, articulate, and capable Thinking Maps has proven to be an important initiative in our district because it provides our teachers and students with a means of helping students organize their thoughts and to be able to analyze and present their ideas. This is particularly important in the district of our diversity because it allows students, regardless of their level of English proficiency and capability, to be able to participate in discussions and to really be able to contribute to the overall classroom discourse. We began with the thinking maps in bilingual classrooms. We did it in English and we did them in Spanish. We use the thinking maps in our collaborative classes with mainstream and ESL teachers. And we noticed a variety of things. One was that because of the visual nature of thinking maps, the children quickly grasped the concepts behind each of the maps. In addition to that, the teachers began to look at these children differently. They were asking them different types of questions that challenged their thinking. It was perfect because their little brains were hungry for a kind of challenge that awakened their curiosity and their interest and their desire to have more words to express what they were thinking and also what they were learning. When the children sit down to work, the curriculum becomes much clearer and more evident to them because they have that visual representation. In kindergarten through second grade, the children are taught the very specific maps and they practice how to use them within the reading context, within their social studies, science, and math. 
In third grade, it becomes a transitional year for many of the children because they start to experience the maps in a different way. They're able to really analyze the topic that they're learning and start to think about which maps they're going to use and why. We find that the discussions become very deep and the children take their thoughts, talk about what their findings are, and then begin to write. We found that the children all of a sudden are using language in a deeper and more meaningful way. What was fortuitous was that thinking maps brought to our teachers and our students a metaphor for understanding deep cortical thought processes so that students are not just passive recipients of knowledge. Proof is in the state tests. We finally, as a school on third, fourth, and fifth grade last year, achieved 80% proficiency in English language arts. We created structures such that our English language learners can be taught within a classroom among all students so that we didn't create differentiations along the way between removing ESL students on one side to having the English proficient student on the other. We used a balanced literacy approach, a gutted reading model, and by really understanding that good teaching and learning, that challenging curriculum can bring even those who are attempting to master the English language to a place where they can feel good about their education, about their accomplishment. remember, a child is not a test score. A literate citizenry is just a citizenry that can read. It is not a citizenry that can think.